Is there a reason I write about God and faith and everything in general? Um, I was raised in a pretty uh, Christian Baptist household with my grandparents. So I was exposed to a lot of religion growing up, even despite the fact that even as a kid, I didn't really buy into it very much. Um, so it was a, it was a big influence on my life as a kid. Cause even if I, even if I wasn't going to church, I was like, um, volunteering and helping at the church to, you know, it, all kinds of things between like buffing the floors, changing the door handles, um, giving a new paint job to the church just all kinds of volunteer work to improve the church even though i didn't really care for church i didn't believe in what the church was saying so religion and faith in god had a pretty big influence on my upbringing and despite the fact that i have a lot of questions and doubts about faith and spirituality in general i think there's a lot of lessons to be learned through religion and through faith and through God. And I think it's very interesting. So I like to write about it at the very least metaphorically. Um, and I never like, I never like to push an agenda on people, whether it's anti-religious or pro-religious. I, I say this a lot, but I like people to think for themselves. So if you look at a lot of bad omens lyrics, for the most part, they're pretty ambiguous, and even when they are in favor of one or the other, they're acknowledging the existence of God, at least. So, with that being said, I think I think it leaves room for interpretation to the listener to make their own decision and not go based off of what a band they like or an influencer or, you know, an artist or whoever that they admire or look up to believes in or doesn't believe in, because I, I never want to be that guy. I like, I want to encourage people to think for themselves. And if you believe in God, I think that's awesome. Like I have tons of Christian friends. I have tons of people that believe in God that are, I'm great friends with. And and I have, you know, vice versa. I have tons of people that don't. So with that being said, I never want to push a certain agenda. And I like to leave things pretty ambiguous so that people can think for themselves. And they don't have to look to me for answers because I don't have the answers. I don't even know what I believe in. So <laughs> every time you say that being said. Um, so that being said, I... <laughs> I don't want anyone to believe in anything because I do or don't. I want people to think for themselves and find their own way because that's the true path to happiness is finding yourself, finding what you believe in and finding what makes you happy. So I don't want you guys to make an assumption or form an opinion based on my own opinions. Your opinions are yours. And I think that's awesome. I think that's what makes us unique as people. We have our own voices. We have our own opinions. And, um, you know, that's what makes us different. And that's what creates a conversation to, for growth and education. So, um, yeah. So, you know, if you are watching this stream, that's only 117 viewers in here, but if you are watching this and you're struggling with, you know, your, your faith or your spiritualism or your beliefs, don't look to me for answers. Just enjoy the music. Take what you can from what I believe in, from the lessons I try to teach and form your own opinions and, you know, follow, follow your heart. <laughs> I do miss the Killed and Born Again tour. It was a great tour. <laughs> but yeah, we are writing tons of songs right now. Even, even though most of my quarantine has been me just getting drunk and, um, watching terrible TV, uh, <laughs> I have been writing a lot of music and a lot of lyrics and I wish I could show you guys so much. It's so awesome. I'm, I'm really finding myself and my voice specifically lately. And I've been kind of just trying new things and weird things that are exciting, 
because I I don't really care about being weird or be people, you know, judging me for what I'm doing. So I've just been, you know, writing music and singing over it and doing whatever feels cool and sounds cool and feels right. So I think there's a lot of room for growth when it comes to my my vocals and my range of my vocals and how I write music in general. And I think you guys will hear that on the next Bad Omens record, but I want to stay vague and keep it mysterious so that you guys have a surprise because I don't like to ruin surprises and I hate when surprises are ruined for me. So what's your favorite song from the new album? Do you mean like the re-release or the new new album? Um, writing for Bio or ghost writing for other bands? I've been doing both. I've been writing a lot for other artists and I've also been writing a lot of new Bad Omens songs. Finding God Before God Finds Me. I think Mercy in Kingdom of Cards. Mercy, I just love lyrically because it means so much to me. And it's kind of, for me, Mercy is a statement on just um, the current state of politics and, and social culture in general. I think it speaks a lot about just humanity and just how fucking stupid we are, myself included. I'm just as guilty. We all are. Um, and there's really not much we can do about it. But Mercy is pretty much about politics and humanity and, and Donald Trump and all kinds of shit that I just wanted to let out. And again, keep ambiguous so that people can find their own meanings with it. But for me, that's what I mean. Word Alive, Bad Omens collab. <laughs> there, there's been no talk of that, but that, that could be cool. Telly does not live very far away from me. We could make a song. Favorite band? I don't have a favorite band. I have I have like in the moment things I like to listen to a lot that I love like right now it's um sleep token they're one of my I love them so much their their music sounds a lot like where I wanted finding God before God finds me to go but it just didn't go there musically and I would never try too hard to do something to the point that it wasn't real so that's why I didn't get there but yeah it's just very it almost feels like Christian music but it's not so Sleep Token is awesome. Listen to Levitate um, and listen to The Garden, I think it's called. <sighs> Any more songs with EDM artists coming soon? Yes. We have a whole bunch of Dethrone remixes that we're working on releasing right now. Do I come up with all the lyrics? Um, yes. Pretty much, I would say like 95% of the lyrics are me. Jolly helps me sometimes. With the lyrics is he has a few ideas here and there melody wise and he writes words to them and he doesn't realize that the words are way cooler than he thinks they are because there's like a bit of a language barrier because Swedish is his first language but he writes some really cool lyrics sometimes and we end up using them. Another cover song? Probably not. I don't really like doing covers at least when it comes to Bad Omens. I don't, I don't know. I like to make my own things and make them the best as they can be. I don't love to do covers. The only reason the Come Undone cover made it onto the re-release is because we just had it laying around and we were never gonna release it and I wanted people to hear it. But it was it was never intended to be released. It was just something that I made with my friend Andrew. Andrew Bayless, he's a producer. It's something that we made together that we thought was fun and I wanted to put it out there. My biggest fear when it comes to releasing new music, um, that's tough. I guess I'm afraid that people won't understand what I'm trying to do. And I'm afraid that people don't know what we're capable of as a band. Like if we choose to go one direction or choose to do one thing, people think it's because we don't know or we can't write heavy music anymore or do a certain sound anymore. And the reality is, like, I could I could do all that, but I want to write what I want to hear and what I want to play live. And, and in my personal opinion, on this past tour, we got to play Never Know and Limits live for the first time on this tour. And it was so, so much fun for me because it's just how my, this is where my vocals have landed at this point in my life. You know, I'm much older than I was when I wrote the self-title for Bad Omens. So for me singing in a in a 
point of comfortability that I'm at now is way more, you know, exciting for me live than trying to sound like I sounded when I was 17 or trying to, you know, say the words I wrote when I was 17. It's way more fun now. So I, I think people can relate, like relate with that and people like the new songs. And I think that's a good sign that we're going in the right direction and that people won't hate us for writing more songs like that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Who do you feel has big in, been your biggest inspiration or supporter? Um, my friends, to be honest. My close friends and all the artists I love. The Weeknd is probably one of my top artists I've listened to for the last 10 years that vocal-wise, like lyrically and melody, I get so much inspiration from and I'm sure that's impossible to detect when you listen to our music because it's so different sonically and instrumentally, but if you lived in my head, you could probably understand. Do I have a vocal coach? Yes. Melissa Cross. Her name is Melissa Cross, and she's amazing. She's a wizard, a witch. I don't know. She's a shaman. <laughs> what made you want to name your band Bad Omens? Uh, it's funny you ask that because... Bad Omens was not the band name originally. The band name was Children Without the Vowels. <laughs> and the song Glass Houses was called Bad Omens. So at some point in before we were ever publicly announced or released, Ash from Sumerian, Ash Abelson, the owner of Sumerian, he suggested we name the band Bad Omens instead because it's a way better name. And we all agreed because we didn't love children. I mean, we we did at the time, but I think Bad Omens sounded way cooler. It sounded way more rock and roll, so we ended up going with Bad Omens, and we just decided to rename the song to Glass Houses instead of, you know, keeping it. Why do you think so many bands go softer? Does writing heavy music just become less fun? That's a good question. <laughs> I I really don't know. And, and being at that point in my timeline and my career as a songwriter... I, I'm kind of in the middle because I still write heavy music, but there's a certain degree of emotion and there's like a certain intensity of feeling that you can't convey properly with heavy music. I mean, there is obviously like you can, it can be done, but if you watch like a, a major motion picture or a TV show that's broadcasted or advertised on a mainstream scale, you don't hear that type of music in it because it just doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. You know, it's like putting a, a tacky bumper sticker on a Mercedes Benz. Like it's, there's just a certain level of extreme music where it gets too far and it's hard for the general public and people that don't, aren't familiar with that scene in that world of music to really comprehend and that's not why we make it, and that's not why we address how we write, but it's just that we get older and we turn into those people. And, that, and again, this is just my opinion. I'm not speaking for any other band, so please don't quote me. But <laughs> um, that's kind of how I feel. Like It gets to a point that I would like to be able to listen to my own band's music or show it to my grandmother or sh you know, show it to someone that's never heard music with screaming or aggressive breakdowns or whatever you want to call it in it and them to still understand the art and appreciate the artistic integrity of the music yes obviously i love aurora she's one of my favorite artists ever i love lana del rey acoustic ep maybe we'll see i um we're actually kind of working on putting together an acoustic live stream while all this corona stuff is going on so that we can still interact with our fans and play some music, and I think it'll be cool. Um, do you want to write music forever, or are there other projects and things you want to do later on in life? That's a good question, too. I love writing music, but there's a really big part of me, especially as I get older, that wants to just disappear. <laughs> not in, Not in, like, a sad emo or, you know despondent way but i really want to get a cabin up in the woods up north northwest and i just kind of want to chill and just kind of gather my thoughts you know i've i've been working on this band for so long 
I'd say five, six or seven years now, I've been just full time working on this band and making it be what it is and trying to make it larger than life. So it's, it's a lot of work and it's stressful and a part of me. And even to this day, like I just want to take a weekend and I want to get an Airbnb up North in Lake Tahoe or fucking big bear or whatever. And just take some time away. And I feel like I, there's like this inherent subconscious feeling inside of me that feels like I can't because I'm just like have things I need to worry about to make sure that this band stays alive and that it, it continues to, to be what it is. But I don't mind it. You know, I, I don't have the type of brain that can be that inactive. So I think that's why I don't allow myself to take the breaks that I want to take because I know if I did, I'd probably just be miserable and unhappy. But to answer the next, the most recent question I just saw, yes. And in the future, that's kind of how I see it going. I'd, I'd like to retire and, uh, just live in the woods with a dog. And if I have one with my family, but right now, no dog, no family. So it's just bad omens. <laughs> Are you able to live comfortable life financially wise just being in bad omens? That's another good question. It depends. It really depends. It fluctuates too. Like if we tour a lot in one year at a time and we're really busy, yes. But in a scenario like, like now where our tour got canceled early and the band owes money to merch companies or whoever. Um, I don't like to live that way because my first priority with the band has always been running a smooth, clean business. And I want everyone to be paid back and everyone who's owed money first and foremost, that works for us and continues to be the reason that the band is where it is now. I want them all to get paid first before we pay ourselves. Anyone in the band will tell you that. Um, so no, currently, but that varies and it depends how busy we are. It depends if there's a giant epidemic going around in the world, <laughs> which there is right now. But my point being is, um, it's good. Things are good. And everyone in the band and everyone on our team, our agent our management, we're all doing the best to make the, make a positive situation out of this whole coronavirus thing. And, um, I don't know. We're here now. We're doing it. We're living. We're just, I don't know when this shit's going to end. It would be nice if it would end soon so we could know when exactly they reschedule these dates. But we're here now. Yeah, we're hanging out. I'm still co-writing and ghostwriting for other bands. So if you are in a band or you're an artist and you're struggling with your music or demos and you want help, um, writing music, email me, please. Noah at bad omens, com. My schedule's pretty open and I've been writing music for a lot of other artists that I like. Um, but otherwise, if you're just a bad omens fan in general, stay alert, stay open. And, uh, we will be back on the road sooner than you know.